Lycan, heal. 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 Lycan is my second canine. He's a Czech uh, Shepherd, and he's been really good. Does patrol and narcotics. His interaction with the vet wasn't aggressive, but very, the avoidance was just incredible. I wanted to actually close his mouth, which is the free command. I wouldn't let you touch him. I wouldn't do anything. And it just progressively got worse. And I hear from people, well, you just hold the dog down or do these things. Police dogs, at least in my case, our dog, you're not holding him down. So the anxiety for him got so bad that we tried everything. So we came here to the working dog center and Dr. Otto assured me, as she's done in the past, and she's amazing, I was able to work on this problem and did. And within a matter of a couple months, we're able to do the exams. So the Penn Vet Working Dog Center opened on September 11th of 2012. And we like to think of it as the legacy of 9-11 because it was my work with the dogs um, at Ground Zero that really inspired us to develop a research and teaching and education center. These dogs are not like our pet dogs in a lot of different ways. And, and you know, one of the very first ways that we can think about it is the relationship between the dog and the handler is a life and death relationship. To then understand what their jobs are helps us to kind of devise the best preventive medicine plan for them. Because again, it's different. Their risks, their hazards, they're different. Um, their nutritional requirements may be very different. So what we thought is, wow, what a great opportunity for us to educate veterinarians so they can support these dogs and support these handlers. And so what we've created is a certificate program. And that certificate program is 13 hours of online training first, and then we get in the hands-on. Dr. Otto did a great job with a huge team of putting together all this knowledge that's out there that doesn't get taught in vet school. And so the Working Dog Practitioner Program really appealed to me because we have to be able to look at these dogs and just from the different jobs that they do, help them as much as we can. It's part of the oath that we all took when we graduated vet school. And so to be able to give back to our communities, I know that I have dogs that are protecting my family members every day. And so that gives me a great sense of pride and, and value that we're contributing to our community. I mean, you can see I'm with my dog 24 hours a day, no matter what. So I think for most handlers, if they can go to a vet, that understands police, understands police work, understands the bond. It's okay, bud. It's okay. Good job, buddy. Understands that some of these police dogs, they're high drive, they're working dogs, and they need a, a vet, a vet techs, the nurses that understand how to work with these dogs and how to work with the handlers. Because when we see that the doctor's uncomfortable or that the assistant's uncomfortable, everybody's stress level comes up. And we obviously don't want anyone to get hurt um, we want the dogs and everybody to have a real pleasant experience at the vet. When we talk about working dogs in the military, they call them a force multiplier. Well, I think they're also a good multiplier. So when we're providing that care, that impact that we provide then expands so much more broadly. And that impacts national security, it impacts the health, the welfare. It has such a global impact that I feel like I'm just proud of it. And, and, and does it pay more? No, it doesn't pay more financially. And, and oftentimes we'll you know, discount the care for these working dogs. And I'm proud to be able to do that. It just makes me feel like I am contributing. And, and that I think so many veterinarians are in this to contribute and to, to, to raise the level of love and good in, in the world. And I think this is a great way to be able to do that.